Hello, my name is Surya Jayant Hudar. Today I'll be presenting to you a presentation that I made on positioning the battle for your mind by Al Rice and Jack Trout. Also, if any of you were wondering how many, how much time it took to make the presentation or how many how much time it took to read the book, it only took five to seven days to read the book, and it took around a month to make the presentation it was quite fun in fact the book positioning by al rise and jack trout is a historic book in itself my attempt here is to study it and share my learning only and not for any commercial purpose business owners and entrepreneurs should study this book to benefit most for positioning their product or service and go ahead and compete with the world. 1. What is positioning about? Positioning is about manipulating what's already in the prospect's mind. It's about bridging connections that already exist. It's not about creating something new and different. The mind as a defense against today's volume of communications, screens and rejects much, much of the information offered it. In general, the mind accepts only that which ma matches prior knowledge or experience. Once a mind is made up, it's almost impossible to change it. The strategies that worked in the past will not work today because today's marketplace is too full. There are too many products, companies and too much marketing noise. The best approach to take in our over-communicated society is the oversimplified message. You have to sharpen your message to cut into the mind. Concepts should be poetic, artful, yet straightforward and clearly defined explanation, the basic positioning premise. The average person cannot tolerate being told that they are wrong. They will sit still while being told something they didn't know. That's why news is such a good source of marketing. Once you form an image in the mind, you have to use it or lose it. When you want to communicate the advantages of a political candidate or a product or even yourself, you must turn things inside out. You should look for the solution in the, to your problem, not inside the product, not even inside your own mind. You should look for the solution to your problem inside the prospect's mind. In other words, since so little of your message is going to get through anyway, you ignore the sending side and concentrate on the receiving end. The perception is the reality. Every human being believes that he or she holds the key to universal truth. The customer also believes he or she is always right. So by focusing on the prospect's view rather than the product, you simplify the selection process greatly and increase your communication and effectiveness. The assault on the mind. Our messages keep getting lost because the marketplace is too crowded and the prospects consume only a little bit of the information. So it's like pouring water onto a super saturated sponge. Another reason our messages keep getting lost is the number of media we have and use. Three, getting into the prospect's mind. Positioning is an organized system for finding windows in the mind. It's based on the concept that communication can only take place at the right time under the right circumstances. The easy way to get into the person's mind is to be first. It's better to be first than it is to be better. Is by far the most powerful positioning idea. People remember the first person who does anything. For example, anyone, for example, everyone knows the tallest mountain, but what is the second tallest? Exactly. It's hard to remember second best. If you want to be successful in business, you must appreciate the importance of getting into the mind first. If you didn't get into the mind of your prospect first, pol personally, politically or corporately, then you have a positioning problem. If you can't be first in a category, 
then say, set up a new category you can be first in. You must create a position in the prospect's mind, a position that takes into consideration not only a company's own strengths and weaknesses, but also those of its competitors as well. Don't give your brand a generic name. The name of your brand is just as important as its positioning, maybe even more important. Four, those little ladders in your head. The mind is like a memory bank of a computer. The mind has a slot for each bit of information it has chosen to retain. So in order to put a brand new message into the mind, you have to delete or reposition the old brand that already occupies the category. The mind has no room for what's new and different unless it's related to the old. For th 13 years in a row, Avis, the car rental company, lost money. Then they admitted they were number two and Avis started to make money. So it's best to admit your current position than to lie about it. The best headline for an advertisement is always incomplete. The best headlines always let the reader supply a word or phrase to complete the idea. That's what makes an advertising advertisement involving. To find a unique position, you must ignore conventional logic. Conventional logic says you find your concept inside yourself or inside the product not true what you must do is look inside the prospect's head prospect's mind more than anything else successful positioning requires consistency you must keep after it year after year if you want to be successful today you can't ignore the competitor's position Five, you can't get there from here. Don't fight perceptions with facts. Perceptions will always win. Positioning has nothing to do with whether you mention a competitor or not. It has something to do with considering competitive strengths and weaknesses before you launch a marketing campaign. Posi six, positioning of a leader. History shows the first brand to get into the brain on average gets twice the long-term share of the market of the number two brand and twice again as much as the number three brand. Leadership alone is your most effective marketing strategy. Leadership is your best differentiator. It's the best collateral for your brand's success. When two brands are close, one or the other is likely to get the upper hand and then dominate the market for years to come. In for example, between 1925 and 1930, Ford and Chevrolet were in a neck and neck battle for the market. And then finally, in, when in 1931, Chevro, uh, Chevrolet got the lead, it has only lost it from then four times. You can't build a leadership on your own terms. The best selling under $1,000 high fid fidelity system of East of the Mississippi. You have to build a leadership position in the prospects terms. There are two basic strategies that should come, that should be used hand in hand. They seem contradictory, but aren't. The ultimate objective of a positioning program should be to achieve leadership in a given category. Seven, positioning of a fo follower. Most Me Too products fail to achieve reasonable sales goals because the accent is on better rather than speed. That is, the number two company thinks the road to success is to introduce a Me Too product only better. It's not enough to be better than the competitor. You must introduce your product before anyone else has a chance of establishing leadership. Instead of ado adopting a me too strategy, try to make a better product in the consumer's mind. A better strategy is to find the hole in the leader and fill it. You don't have to be the first to succeed as long as you can create the perception that you were first.
your marketing and advertising should clearly position your brand in a particular price category if nothing else it rationalizes the spending of more money being the first to one establish the high price position two with a valid product story three in a category where consumers are receptive to a high price brand is the secret of success don't try to position your brand comparatively with the leader by saying you are better if you were better you would be the leader rather than asking yourself who are we trying to appeal to try asking yourself the opposite question who should not use our brand don't try to appeal to everybody the everybody trap because you might end up not appealing to anybody eight repositioning the competition to move a new idea or product into the mind you first must move out an old one for a repositioning strategy to work you must say something about your competitor's product that causes the prospect to change his or her mind not about your product but about the competitor's product the late howard gossage used to say the objective of your advertising should not be to communicate with your consumers and prospects at all but to terrorize your compet- competition's copywriters there is some truth in that we better than our competitors is in repositioning it's comparative advertising and it's not very effective there's a psychological flaw in the advertising advertiser's cheese name which the prospect is quick to detect if you're so smart then how come you're not rich nine the power of your name the name is the hook that hangs the brand on the product ladder in the prospect's mind what you must look for is a name that begins the positioning process a name that tells the prospect what the product's major benefit is one of the things that makes positioning thinking difficult for many people is the failure to understand the role of timing only when you're first in the mind with an absolutely new product that millions of people are certain to want can you afford the luxury of a mean nothing name otherwise stick with common descriptive words and avoid the coined words when you want to change a strongly held opinion the first step to take is usually change the name in naming people or products you should not let your competitors unfairly preempt words that you need to describe your own products the first point of contact between the message and the mind is the name 10 the no name trap sometimes things are said using only their initials for example los angeles is called la when they have a choice of a word or a set of initials both equal in phonetic length people will invariably use the word not the initials in general if you remember the set of initials you will also remember the name a company must be extremely well known before it can use initials successfully and make no mistake about it, initials make weak brand or company names mind works by ear not by eye before you can file away with a picture in the mind you have to verbalize it 11 the free ride trap procter and gamble carefully positions each product so that it occupies a unique niche in the mind it's dangerous to hang a well known name on a pr- new product and product ladder as that name is strongly associated with its own sharply defined ladder in dealing with media you must conserve your anonymity anonymity until you are ready to spend it then when you spend it spend it big always keeping in mind that your objective is not publicity but in order to achieve a position in the prospect mind a big company with a big reputation usually can't compete successfully with a smaller company with a well defined position size doesn't matter positioning does 12 the line extension trap inside out thinking is the biggest barrier to success outside in thinking 
the best aid basically inside out thinking is you thinking about your own product and outside in thinking is the prospect thinking about your product so you should see it from the prospect point of view before you can make any judgment instead of your own what does it mean to own a position in the mind simply this the brand name becomes a surrogate or a substitute for the generic name the stronger the position the more often this substitution takes place reverse line extension is called broadening the base one of the best examples of this is johnson's baby shampoo by promoting the mildness of this product to the adult market it has become one of the leading products of adult shampoo 13 when line extension can work one of the keys to understanding the line extension issue is to separate the short term effects from the long term effects for example is alcohol a stimulant or a depressant actually it's both in short term alcohol is a stimulant in the long term alcohol is a depressant line extensions generally work the same way The name is a rubber band. It will stretch, but not beyond a certain point. The more you stretch your name, the weaker it becomes. Just the opposite of what you might expect. The easiest way to kill a brand is to line extend it. The classic test for line extension is the shopping thing, shopping list test. Just list the brands of. you want uh, brands you want to buy things from on a piece of paper and then send your spouse to the supermarket for example colgate kleenex and bear they will, they will mostly get colgate toothpaste kleenex tissue and bear aspirin not colgate mouthwash kleenex towels not bear non aspirin even though these brands have line extended it has not completely destroyed the brand names although it has weakened the brand name line extension can work if one your competitors are foolish two your volume is small three you have no competitors four you don't expect to build a position in the prospect mind or five you don't do any advertising 14 positioning a company xerox you can position anything a person a product a politician even a company actually a lot of buying and selling of companies is going on in fact when an employee accepts a job he or she buys the company rightly or wrongly the better more successful companies have the better people and the smaller less successful companies have the leftovers so if your company occupies the top rung of the product ladder in the prospect's mind you can be sure that the prospect will also think that your company has the best people 15 positioning a country belgium there's a moral here whether you're selling colas companies or countries out of mind means out of business to a position to position a country as a destination you will need attractions that will keep the traveler around for at least a few days to create an effective positioning program you have to verbalize the visuals alliteration can also be an effective memory effective memory device in this process example beautiful belgium incredible india a successful positioning program requires a major long term commitment by the people in charge 16 positioning a product milk duds the first step in any positioning program is to look inside the mind of a prospect isolating a narrow target is usually the first step in finding an effective position most positioning programs are nothing more or less than the search for the obvious yet the obvious is easy to miss if you zero in too quickly on the product itself try to find the trouble area or shortcoming in your competitor's product and fix it in your own 
important lesson from the milk dot example the solution to a positioning problem is usually found in the prospect's mind not in the product 17 positioning a service fedex fedex overnight delivery visuals can be extremely memorable but unless they are connected to a verbal idea they lose their effectiveness we all remember fedex because of its tagline overnight delivery regardless of how much money you spend regardless of how technologically interesting your service is to get inside the prospect's mind you have to relate to what's already there to position any service you need to provide a differentiator between you and your competitors in the fedex example that speed it tells you that overnight you will get your package or your mail so that kind of separates them from their competitors blue dot companies like blue dot 19 positioning a ski resort sto it's a great strategy to include your product in the world's top best list when you use a recognized authority to give your product a service credibility you give you are tapping into a fundamental aspect of human nature the security in not having to trust your own judgment 20 positioning a catholic church once a positioning strategy has been developed it sets the direction for all activities of the organization even one as large and multifaceted faceted as the catholic church 21 positioning yourself and your career the most difficult part of positioning is selecting that one specific concept to hang your hat on positioning if positioning strategy strategies can be used to product promote a product they can surely be used to promote yourself people suffer from the same disease as products and try to be everything to everyone they everybody try yet you must yet you must if you want to cut through the prospect wall of indifference define yourself what are you what is your position in life can you sum up your own position in a single concept and can you run your own career to establish and exploit that position confusion is the enemy of successful positioning make mistakes better to try many times and succeed sometimes than to be afraid of failure and only try sure things make mistakes always try to work for the smartest brightest and most competent person you can find two types of people come in looking for jobs one who excels in the specialty and wants to offer their services because the company is weak in it the other acknowledges the company is strong and in their specialties and wants to work with the best who do you think will get the job you bo- you can't burn in a name that's too common avoid the no name trap avoid the line extension trap everyone deserves a separate identity where you must burn in a clear cut identity into the mind of the public even a famous last name should probably not be used find a horse to ride If you look at biographies of successful people, it's amazing to find how many crawled up the ladder of success right behind someone else. The second horse to ride is the more business friends you make outside of your own own organization, the more likely you are to wind up in a big rewarding job. It's possible to succeed in business or in life all by yourself, but it's not easy. Trying harder is rarely the pathway to success. Trying smarter is the better way. Success in life is based more on what what others can do for you than what you can do for yourself. For ideas, anything definitely definitely in is already on its way out. An idea or a concept without the element an element of a conflict is not an idea at all. You must have faith in others and their ideas. It's possible to succeed in business or in life all by yourself, but it's not easy. Business is a social activity 
with as much cooperation as its competition. 22. Positioning your business. Six questions to ask yourself. 1. What position do you own? Positioning is thinking in reverse. Instead of starting with yourself, you start with the mind of the prospect. 2. What position do you want to own? The job market today belongs to people who can define and position themselves as specialists. 3. Whom must you outgun? 4. Do you have enough money? It takes money to establish and hold a position. 5. Can you stick it out? It's important to take a long-range point of view to determine your basic position and stick to it. Positioning is a concept that is cumulative. Most successful companies rarely share change a winning formula. 6. Do you match your position? Words don't contain meanings. The meanings are not in the words. They are in the people using the words. You must select the words that trigger the meaning you want to establish. Simple ideas work today. Simple concepts expressed with simple words in a straightforward way. Often the solution to a problem is so simple that thousands of people have looked at it without seeing it. When an idea is clever or complicated, however, we should be sus uh, suspicious because it probably won't work since it's not simple enough. Positioning is a simple but not easy. The difficulty is finding an open position that's al also effective. Establishing a successful position is to keep two things in balance. A unique position with an appeal that is not too narrow. The essence of positioning is sacrifice. You must be willing to give up something in order to establish that unique position. Companies look for places to make their brand successful and then roll it out to other markets. 23. Playing the positioning game. It's a whole lot easier to change the facts to fit your opinions. Generally, people make up their minds and then find the facts to verify their opinion. Or even more commonly, they accept the opinion of the nearest expert and then they don't have to bother with the facts at all. Language is the currency of the mind. To be successful in the positioning era, you must be brutally frank. You must try to eliminate all ego from the decision-making process. It only clouds the issue. One of the most critical aspects of positioning is being able to evaluate the products objectively and see how they are viewed by customers and prospects. The big winners in business are those people who have found open positions near the center of the spectrum, not at the edge. To repeat the first rule of positioning is, to win the battle for the mind, you can't compete head on against a company that has a strong established position. You can go around, under or over, but never head to head. The leader owns the high ground, the number one position in the prospect's mind, the top rung of the product ladder. To move up the ladder, you must follow the rules of positioning. If you're not the leader, set up a new category that you can be leader in. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I hope you liked it. If you have any queries or questions or basically anything, uh, my email was over there on the last slide. I'll just show it again. Uh, yeah, I hope you can see it. And please uh, share your views. Also, if any of you were wondering how, many, how much time it took to make the presentation or how many how much time it took to read the book it only took five to seven days to read the book and it took around a month to make the presentation it was quite fun in fact thank you